Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to another planty video. Today we are tackling another collection video and this one is gonna be a doozy because apparently I have 39 different species of Hoya in my home, which is insane. I would have thought that I had more philodendron than anything, but I did my philodendron collection video last month. I'll link that down below if you haven't seen it. Um, and I had, I think 27 or 28 philodendron. So I have like over 10 more Hoya, which is just madness. When I was going around and making my list here, I was like, holy smokes. Like I have so many of them, it's crazy. So I hope that you enjoy Hoya like I apparently do. Not apparently, I know I like Hoya. It's probably my second favorite genus of plant, honestly, probably philodendron and then Hoya. Monstera is really creeping up there though, I will say. And Anthurium and Begonia. Oh my goodness. Prepare for a lot of collection videos in the future because yeah. So we are in for quite the video today because I have ranked every single Hoya and I'm going to be sharing them with you from my least favorite to my absolute top favorite. So make sure you watch to the end of this video to see some amazing, incredible Hoya that I am just obsessed with. I can't wait to show them to you. Grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a cozy beverage, watch this video in segments, whatever works for you. I just appreciate that you're here and I hope that you enjoy. So like I said, I'm gonna start um, at the bottom of my list. So I'm gonna start with the plant that I ranked 39 and then we're just gonna work our way forward. And the plant that I did indeed rank number 39 or last on my list is this one right here. This is my Hoya Polyneura Broguette, which is the silver version of the Hoya Polyneura. So it has these beautiful silver markings on it. They are so incredible when they're grown out. Obviously you can see that mine is just two leaves and that is indeed why I have ranked it last. I love this plant. I think they're so beautiful and I would really love to have one, but unfortunately, I've had this plant for a year now and it came to me with these two leaves and it remains those two leaves. I have gotten absolutely zero growth from this. I've tried different things. I have no idea why it's not growing. I recently repotted it into a tree fern fiber mix, which um, I also repotted another Hoya of mine that wasn't growing into the same mix and then it started growing after. So. I was kind of hopeful that maybe that would trigger some growth on this, but so far it's done absolutely nothing still. So unfortunately, I just had to put it last, not because I don't like this plant. And that's um, that's kind of how my rankings work because all these Hoya that I have, I like, or else I wouldn't have them, but they all have just their different reasons that I just, you know, I'm not loving them or enjoying them as much. And that's what's been going on with this one. So if you have any ideas for me, any things that I can try, leave a comment down below and help me out. Next, we have Hoya Incrustata Inner Variegated, which is a stunning variegated Hoya. Look at that. Oh my goodness, when I first got this, I was like, wow, I was so excited. Like the variegation is just so beautiful and the leaves get pretty big too. It's a stunning Hoya. Unfortunately, mine, um, I have a couple problems. One, it just doesn't grow or it grows very, very slowly. I have gotten a few leaves on it, but not, not many, <laughs> like literally only a few. And when it did finally start growing and giving me leaves, it unfortunately has just been giving me these green leaves. They have like a tiny bit of a lighter green on them, but they're basically not variegated at all which really sucks because I'm really, you know, hoping for this type of leaf. However, there's been a recent development and it's these leaves coming in here, which look like they are variegated. So I'm really curious to see what these are gonna end up looking like and to kind of see what this plant is gonna do now. I hope that the background noise isn't coming through too much. My partner's cleaning the gutters like right outside this window. Anyways, yeah, it's just been slow growing. It kind of reverted on me, but we have hope yet. So I'm gonna keep growing this out. Um, I would love to have, you know, a beautiful version of this one day. So my fingers are crossed for that. Next, if you have been on my channel for a while, you'd be very familiar with this plant because I've had this since 2019. This is my variegated Hoya Compacta. And um, I love this plant. Like variegated compacta is honestly one of my top dream plants, like to have a nice big one. But unfortunately I've had this for what, four years now. And this is what it looks like. 
and this is honestly like pretty good for 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 this particular plant because it's been much smaller in the past so yeah basically this doesn't grow for me or it grows extremely extremely slow I have tried so many things to get this to take off. I've chopped and propped, I've repotted, I've downsized the pot, I've grown it in the cabinet, outside of the cabinet, and now the next thing that I've been trying has been growing it outside where it's been living for the past couple of months. I've had a couple of my Hoya do really well outside this summer, so I figured maybe that would be the cure for this one, and you're gonna notice this as a theme for the next few Hoya I'm gonna talk about but I figured maybe if I put it outside, it will start loving life. And it's been doing okay out there. Like I can't lie, it's been doing okay. It just hasn't, it just hasn't had the glow up that I was really hoping for, but it has grown a little bit. I do see that there's a new leaf trying to come in right there as well, but it's just, you know, I would love to see this trail at some point. Like, come on, it's been several years. Can you just give me one vine? I would really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just keep it in hopes that one day it's gonna magically start growing for me, but it hasn't really yet. It's small though, and it doesn't take up a lot of space, so I just kind of keep it in my collection. But that is one that I honestly probably do want to get another one of one day, because I feel like that one just, I don't know, the genetics are just not there. So I wanna try out a different one and hopefully be able to grow a nice big one because, spoiler alert, the Compacta is one of my top favorite Hoya, like the regular green one. Next, similar kind of story. This is my Hoya Compacta Moana Loa, which is the inner variegated version of Hoya Compacta, which is also beautiful. I think if I could choose one, like to have a big one of either of these, I would go with the other one, the outer variegated. I think I prefer that one. I've had this one for a few years now as well. And the reason that I got it is because I heard that the Moana Loa version of the variegated compacta is the easier of the two. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll get this one. It'll grow well for me and I can have a variegated compacta. But no, it has, first of all, just not really grown. Like it's been the same kind of thing. It was just this vine for like years. And then it started putting out a new vine and I got so excited, except for it's literally just green. Like this vine is fully reverted. I'm probably gonna end up chopping this and just adding it into my regular green compacta because there's absolutely no variegation on it. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> like just my luck that it starts growing, but it's not variegated. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this. This is also currently living outside. I mean, this vine is loving life, but the variegated vine doesn't really look like it's doing much, which sucks. So yeah, no variegated compacta for me, but hopefully one day because I, I do love me a compacta. Next, this is honestly kind of a similar story again. This is my Hoya Obovada Inner Variegated, which I've had for like a year or something now. I, I mean, that sounds kind of long, but to me, I feel like I haven't had this for that long. It came to me with these beautiful variegated leaves and um, it promptly, well, not even promptly, it was very slow to get started, but once it started growing, it gave me green leaves. They're beautiful, but they're just green. And obviously I wanted variegated. So yeah, um, it wasn't doing, it gave me those green leaves and then it wasn't doing anything. So I decided to do the same thing and pop it outside because my just regular Hoya obovada is, has been doing really well out there this summer. Um, and it did end up giving me this leaf, it has a little bit of variegation, but it's kind of wonky. So I don't know, I would love to have again, just like a nice version of this, not even big. I mean, big would be nice, but just, just a healthy version of this with the variegation because the Hoya Obovada is so beautiful. I love, it's a Hoya that I just admire whenever people have a really nice specimen of it. I haven't mastered it. I've honestly had a tricky time just with my regular Obovada. So I guess I'm not really surprised that I'm also having a tricky, a tricky time with this one, but I just hope that one day I can figure both of them out because I love the regular one. I love the variegated one. And um, yeah, there's some, oh my goodness, some people have just incredible versions of Hoya Obovada. You can get variegation with splash and oh my goodness, some of them are just like mind blowing. But yeah, hopefully that will grow better for me one day. Next, we have a plant that I have had since 2019 again. 
and it is this gal right here. What a throwback, honestly. I remember in 2019 when I was kind of first really getting into plants and the plant shops were flooded with these and everybody wanted them. They were like flying off the shelves. I remember they were like $40. Um, these like nice full pots of them. So I feel like around that time, this really was just like a staple plant that every plant parent had in their collection, at least where I'm living in Canada. They were honestly just popping up everywhere. It's crazy. But now I don't really see them and I don't really see that many people that still have them. And I honestly think that it's because this thing is such a pain in the butt to grow. Like I cannot tell you how much I've struggled with this, how hard I've tried to figure out what conditions and what lighting it wants but it's doing the best it's ever done right now. And that's because it's living outside. So outside covered deck, no direct light seems to be where she thrives. I cannot believe how full she's getting, how many new leaves she's getting. Like, look at her. It's just so, so crazy. Oh my goodness. She's honestly living her best life out there. I'll bring you a little bit closer. So the problem that I've had with this plant in the past, or like the main problem, I guess, is that the leaves would all get this like burning type thing on the variegation. And it seems to happen with like very little light, but now it's living outside with more light and it's happy. And I've also heard other people say that these need high light, but mine would always just burn. So I don't know if that, that is actually like a burn from light or if it's something else. I have no idea. You can see that this one up here got like that as well. It just seems really hard to keep the variegated parts of these leaves nice. I will say I've gotten a lot of growth that does look really nice though since moving it outside. And it's getting like, the leaves are really in big clusters. Like it's getting a lot of them and you can see that there's new leaves trying to come in there and on that one as well. Like there's just new growth coming from everywhere and there's new vines starting down here. Um, it's been really cool to see it thrive over the summer, but I will say that I'm quite nervous to bring it in for the fall because it just does not grow well for me indoors. So if any of you are currently growing this plant and you have any tips for me, or even just like, let me know what conditions, like what lighting, how you're taking care of this plant. I need all the details because I have never been able to really figure it out until now and I can't leave it outside all winter. So yeah, we'll see what happens, but I would love to hear your thoughts if you do have one. Next, we have Hoya croniana, which is a Hoya that I love. I just kind of ranked it lower on this list because I've kind of been ignoring it lately and I did debate getting rid of it not too long ago because I have the Hoya Croniana Super Silver, which I do prefer over this one. Ugh, I feel bad saying that. I love this one, but I'm just, you know me. I love my silver plants. So of course I love the silver version, but this is such a great Hoya. It blooms all the time. And that's kind of the reason I still have it is because when I was thinking of getting rid of it, it started blooming. So I was like, okay, you can stay but um, it lives in my office and it is a little bit neglected. I don't, I tend to neglect the plants in the north side of my house a little bit just because they need less care compared to the plants here in the south side. It's so much hotter and brighter here. So I'm so busy with the plants out here that I kind of put the ones over there on the back burner, but you know, it's something I need to work on and get better about because this poor thing is so thirsty right now. So I'm gonna be watering it after this video but I love Hoya Croniana, it's gorgeous. I just think I prefer the silver version. Okay, so next at number 31 is my Hoya Fungii, which is looking like this. And I feel like I say this whenever I talk about this Hoya, but it's always going to be a little bit special to me because this is the only Hoya that I've grown from a wet stick. Uh, I feel like it's a lot harder to grow Hoya from wet stick than something like, you know, Philodendron, Monstera, things like that but I did it somehow. I remember I stuck it on moss in a Tupperware container and kept it under grow lights and eventually it somehow started growing for me and now I have this little plant. It's not doing its best. It's never really been one that thrives for me. I think I need to repot this. I don't know. I feel like I need to take better care of it. It's just kind of one that like hangs out and exists, but I never really prioritize. So it never is looking amazing but I really should put more effort into this one because I do love Hoya fungi and I really love the blooms. I would love to have this bloom one day. 
So I'm gonna start putting more work into it because it deserves it and I really wanna see it just looking its best. It is a really cool Hoya. I love the leaves, love the veins on them and it's also fuzzy. Like it has a fuzz to it, especially underneath and I love fuzzy plants. So this is one that I really want to see um, start doing better. So hopefully it will within the next little while here. All right, I have to go grab the next batch of plants. Okay, so coming in at number 30 on my list is Hoya erythrina. This is the one that I was talking about that wasn't growing for me. I got it, I think at the same, no, I think I, I think I got it at the same time as my um, Hoya polyneura broguette and neither of them would grow. But after the repot into tree fern fiber, this one started growing. I got these two new leaves, which I was so excited about because I thought maybe this plant was gonna be one of those Hoya that would just never grow for me. But now it's going and it looks like it's even gonna put out a couple more new leaves. Like it's preparing, preparing on the vine there to push them out. So I'm really happy about that. This one is so pretty. The veins on it, I love the dark veins. It has a really shiny leaf. And these look phenomenal when they're sun stressed. So I would love to grow this out and then get it sun stressed one day. That would just be incredible. Yeah, these are really, really stunning if you look them up and see some other specimens because obviously mine is not, it's not anything to write home about yet, but I'm really excited for the future of this one. I think that it's gonna look really amazing one day. Next, we have my Hoya latifolia snow queen. This one I haven't had for very long. It's fairly new to my collection, but it's grown a ton. I actually can't even believe how much it's grown. It's kind of crazy. It came to me with, I think just three or four leaves. Uh, these larger ones down here are what it came to me with. And then it shot out this vine and all of these leaves are new within the past couple of months. So. I've just got a ton of growth and these ones up here are new as well. So yeah, it's just grown like crazy for me. The leaves aren't huge. Like they're definitely supposed to be a lot bigger on this plant. I mean, some of them are still soft, so maybe they'll expand, but these were coming out around the time of the move and everything. So I'm not surprised that they're not, you know, growing out to their full potential. But I think that once this settles in and once I really just nail the conditions for this one, I think it's gonna take off for me and I'm gonna start getting more of these really big leaves. But look at the variegation. Like it is just so, so pretty. The Snow Queen is basically a lot of folia with just a lot of splashing on it. It's so, so gorgeous. I love it. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of her and I am really excited to watch her grow even more. She's gonna need a bigger trellis like pretty quick which is crazy because I just gave her this trellis not long ago, but she's just, um, she's on a mission here. Next, coming in at number 28 is my Hoya Obovada, just the regular green one that I was talking about. Need to back up here. This was living outside. This is the first Hoya that I noticed really starting to take off outside and that convinced me I needed to put more Hoya outside because this one has never grown amazingly for me. I've always kind of struggled with it, but then it started putting out just these incredible leaves. I think this one was the one that I was just so obsessed with. It's so round and the splashing was beautiful and the splashing was even kind of pink when it first came out. It was just so pretty. And since then I've gotten other really big leaves, but some of them just haven't been looking amazing. And this is my problem with Hoya Obovada. So if anybody's cracked the code, let me know. But it's that the leaves often can come out just wonky. Like I want the beautiful round leaves, but I have so many leaves that just look like this. Like they're just weird. Like what the heck is this? You know what I mean? I want nice big round leaves, but it just seems very hard to get like a perfect leaf on this plant. This one looks like it has a lot of potential actually, that new leaf coming in. Look at that. It looks really like smooth and round. It's really pretty actually, cause it's coming in so dark. Yeah, I really love this plant. It's just, I've struggled with it a lot. It has been doing really well outside though. So I've been really happy with that. I just noticed actually on one of these that I have, yeah, right here. I have a little peduncle coming in. Are you gonna be able to see that? Oh my goodness. It's so hard to show on these vines. There's a little peduncle coming in and that's my, I think first ever peduncle on this plant. So I don't know if that's actually gonna bloom for me or not, but it's really cool to see that. And just to see this plant doing a little bit better in general. Like I do have new leaves 
coming in on pretty much every vine. It's grown a ton over the summer living outside. It's doing okay. It's just not looking like the obovadas that I see other people have with the perfectly round leaves, beautifully trailing down, blooming, dark foliage. I mean, I know that if I had this in lower light, then I'd have darker foliage. It's pretty light just because it's living outside. And even though it's completely in the shade, it still um, is obviously getting like highlight because the leaves are pretty green. But yeah, anyways, I have much to ponder. Oh my goodness, look at this one. It's so big and oval. Um, I have much to ponder when it comes to this plant, but again, any tips, I would love to hear them. Okay, next we have a fun one. This is my Hoya Kaimuki, which is a hybrid of, oh my goodness, it's something like McGilvery and Archboldiana or something like that. I could be wrong, but it's a really beautiful hybrid. I love the leaves on this and it also has really cool blooms. I feel like I'm nowhere near having this bloom for me considering mine is so small and considering I have... I mean, I wouldn't say it's hard, but I just haven't seen the most progress with this one or had the easiest time with it. But oh my goodness, the leaves. Like, are you kidding me? I love these long, dark leaves. It's so pretty. And the new leaves come in super, super dark. Oh, it's just beautiful. I love this Hoya so much. I can see that it really needs a bigger trellis. Look at this vine. Like, it literally goes on forever. It's kind of crazy. This lives right in my south facing window. It loves a lot of light. And I will say I do see a lot of new vines or new growth coming in. Like there's a new growth that's activated right there. We have a new vine coming out right here with new leaves coming in, which I'm really excited about because that's gonna be the first new leaves on this plant in a very long time. I have propagated this before just in water that went well. I think it was this cutting. Yeah, this cutting that I put back in. Oh no, maybe it was these ones. These, um, this was a separate cutting that I put back in. She's not doing a lot for me yet, but just wait, my friends. I think that this is gonna be a really immaculate plant one day. Next, we have my Hoya Wayedii, which is a Hoya, or one of the Hoya that I've had the longest in my collection. It's very, very full. Look at that. Look at how lush she is. It's so crazy. This is a Hoya that, um, I guess doesn't excite me too much. It just kind of hangs out. Like it's just always been in my collection, just kind of hanging out, but it has grown a lot and it is super full. Like I love just looking at how lush it is. It is starting to vine down a little bit. Like at first it was just growing more full, but now it's starting to vine down, which is kind of cool to see. Um, but this is honestly a really pretty Hoya. Like I should appreciate it more. I love the dark margin on the leaves. Like, look at that. And it's been so resilient. Like I have really truly neglected this. I've had this in very dark spots. It's really suffered over winters, but it always bounce back, bounces back once the spring comes. Right now it lives in my south facing window and it's loving life. So yeah, it's really fun to see this one just doing a little bit better. And these actually have really cool blooms or I don't know if I would say cool, but I really love the blooms on these, which I didn't know. I didn't even really know what they looked like until I saw someone post one not too long ago. So now I'm thinking that I hope that this blooms for me one day. So I will be really excited if that happens. I haven't had a lot of Hoya blooms recently, which I don't know, kind of surprises me, I guess, because it's been so hot in here all summer and so bright. And I'm just kind of like, hello? Like, is anybody home? Is anyone gonna give me any flowers? I don't know. I've had a couple, like my sunrise has bloomed and that croniana bloom I got, my chicken farm, which we'll see later. So I have had some blooms, but just not as many as I would expect, you know? Wyetia's time will come eventually, hopefully, but yeah, looking great. Next, we have a fun one, this little cutie here. It's always so hard to show the smaller leafed plants on video, but this is my Hoya Ching Hung, Ching Hung Ensis, I think. I always am either calling it something different or saying the name wrong, I don't know. But it's this cutie little small leafed Hoya. Look at that, oh my goodness, she's so cute. I love her. Yeah, we have these adorable little leaves. She kind of grows crazy. Like honestly, she is just marching to the beat of her own drum and I respect it. Um, but yeah, really cute little leaves, kind of fuzzy almost like um, this is giving the vibes of Hoya Bella crossed with Hoya Serpents. 
just the shape of the leaves and how they have like a little bit of fuzz. They're very cute. And the blooms on this actually look quite similar to Hoya Bella. So I'm hoping to grow this out and to have it bloom for me one day. I think that they can actually be pretty prolific bloomers. So hopefully that would be the case for mine. But it's been really fun to grow so far. It lives in my cabinet. This is again one of the Hoya that I potted into tree fern and it loves it. Look at the new growth coming out. Like how cute are those new little vines? It's just adorable, honestly. So yeah, I've been loving this one so far. I haven't had it for very long. I got this from Plant Haven Toronto probably a few months ago now, but it's settled in really nicely. And then actually speaking of Hoya Bella, next is my Hoya Bella, both the outer variegated and the inner variegated. Ooh, there's a fuzz. Outer and inner variegated are both potted in here. So I'm just gonna talk about them as one plant because I really do just like classify them together at this point. I've had a difficult time growing both of these, the outer and the inner variegated. I mean, the outer is a little bit easier. You can see there's much more outer variegated in this pot than inner. It's mostly outer variegated except for this one um, vine here, which doesn't really look amazing. But yeah, I've just struggled with this plant in general. You can probably tell by how <laughs> sparse it is up at the top and then it starts getting a little bit more lush further down. I kind of hated it, but now I'm like, you know, it's kind of funky, kind of different. So I'm just letting it do its thing. I'm not in any rush to chop it up or anything. Sometimes I need to remind myself not to just be seeking perfection when it comes to plants and to just embrace how they want to grow. So yeah, this one is just kind of hanging out. Does it look picturesque? No, but she's just living her life and she's been doing better. So I'm very thankful for that. It's funny that I tend to struggle with a lot of variegated Hoya. I don't know what that's about, but it's literally the same story as my compacta with this one. I had a green Hoya Bella and I loved it. It did so well for me. It got so lush so quickly. It was always blooming. It was just like a dream Hoya. And I loved it so much that I decided I wanted the variegated versions and I got rid, I sold just the green version. And I was like, I'll just grow the variegated ones because that's cooler. But no, I really regret getting rid of my green one because it did so well and it was so beautiful. And now I have the variegated one, which I'm just not as happy with. I mean, if I can really figure it out and it starts doing better for me, then of course I will love it just as much, but it's never bloomed for me and the leaves just don't look as nice, don't grow as fast. I don't know. Still figuring that one out, I suppose. Okay, next we have another big one and it is my Hoya Sunrise. She's actually gotten massive. Like she is huge now. I got this as not even a big plant. I got this as quite a small plant, in fact. And now it is this huge hanging basket. <laughs> She's so full, it's crazy. And it's funny because I almost got rid of this Hoya before I moved here, so like a few months ago. And I'm glad that I didn't because she's just been living her best life. She started growing a ton. So I was like, okay, I'll keep her. But now she's so lush. She blooms so much. Like if you're looking for an easy to bloom Hoya, try out the sunrise. She doesn't have a bloom right now, of course. She did just drop a bunch of blooms, but she does have a lot of peduncles that are in various phases of being active. One right there for you to see. Another one there, another one there. They're just kind of everywhere. So yeah, she will bloom. The only thing that I don't love about mine in particular is just that I can't really get her to sun stress. I don't know what it is. I have such a hard time getting my Hoyas to sun stress. This lives in a south facing window. It gets very bright light, but I will say it doesn't get a ton of direct sun because the sun has been so high. And this is like, I don't know, maybe a foot away from the window because it's hanging from the curtain rod. So if I had this right in the window or maybe in the fall when the sun's a little bit lower and this is gonna be getting more direct light, maybe then it will sun stress. But I, I mean, I love it just like, it is beautiful just like this. But when Hoya Sunrise is sun stressed, it really is just phenomenal. So that's my goal with this one day. I mean, not looking very promising since we're going into winter, but maybe the fall will just bring it a lot more sunshine and I'll get some sun stressing. It's just crazy how much she's grown. Honestly, this is such a fast grower. Definitely recommend, especially for beginners. Super, super easy Hoya. Next on my list is my little cutie Hoya Crimson Princess. So this is the variant of Hoya Carnosa that has the inner variegation 
which is so gorgeous oh my goodness and the leaves come out so pink it's just really really beautiful so the reason that I wanted this one is because I love my Crimson Queen so much, which is the outer variegated Hoya Carnosa. So I wanted to have both of them, the Princess and the Queen. And yeah, I love it. Honestly, I feel like these Hoya are so underrated because the variegation is so stunning and there's so much of it. Like the white on this is just, it takes up most of the leaf. It's so, so beautiful. But this is a very common Hoya, so I guess that's a good thing. You can go find this honestly at like grocery stores and big box stores. Like I said, it gets pink. How pretty is that? Oh my goodness, she's gorgeous. Another variegated Hoya that's becoming more common that I would love to grab is the Hoya, Ar Hoya, Ar Hoya Australis Lisa, which is another really pretty variegated Hoya that I've been seeing pop up in big box stores here. So maybe I'll grab that one eventually, but apparently I don't need any more Hoya because I have over 40 of them um but yeah it's it's beautiful it's super easy haven't had any problems with it um I, half of it is green as you can see so some of the vines can revert i'm just leaving it in there though it's kind of cool that it's like half variegated and half just green again i'm just letting her do her own thing and i'm not interfering too much so yeah really like this one and she's also living outside and she's grown a ton it's kind of fun that i'm filming this video because i haven't really picked up a lot of the plants that have been living outside over the summer so i haven't really been able to see how much she's grown but i picked her up and i was like oh wow like you are loving life out here girl and then coming in at number 21 so we're halfway through is my hoya Pricti, I still don't know how to say that Pricti, I'm not sure obviously all the names will be on the screen but I haven't had this Hoya for very long okay only a couple of months now but I'm obsessed like just look at these leaves they are massive these are definitely the biggest Hoya leaves that I currently have in my collection when I saw this I was just like immediately yes like this is so cool I hadn't really heard of this before. I don't see a lot of people have it. Let me know if you have one. Cause I just, I don't really know much about this Hoya except for I love the big massive leaves. Like I said, it's been with me for a couple of months and it's actually doing pretty well. We have a new leaf coming in here. It looks like it's coming in a little bit janky, but we'll see if it sorts itself out. I'm just glad that it's growing. But what's even more exciting than that, in my opinion, is that at the very end, first of all, it's got this massive vine and at the very end, we have blooms coming in. And I was really hoping that they would be open for this video, but as you can see, they are not. So I'll have to post um, once they do open. And it's kind of fun because I feel like I'm doing like a surprise birth or something. I'm highly anticipating this opening because I have no idea what these flowers are gonna look like. I'm sure that I maybe looked it up when I first got this, but it's just left my brain. I have no idea yeah I, I don't know what to expect so within the next few days i would imagine for sure these are going to be opening so i'm so excited to see what they're going to look like you guys i just realized that i have forgotten one and this is the second one i realized i forgot one before too but it was before i started filming the video so i was able to revise everything but i just realized that i missed one of my hoya and hopefully that's the last one that i've missed so my numbers are going to be a little bit off I actually have 40 different species of Hoya. Oh my goodness, it just keeps going up. So I'm gonna pop that in. Luckily, I wouldn't have gotten to it yet with where I'm ranking it. So I'm just gonna pop it in um, later on in the video. Okay, next on my list is Hoya Crassi Petiolata Splash. This is one that I got in a trade. Um, oh my goodness, I don't even know when. I think like a year ago and I was just so blown away with how beautiful the leaves are. I'll show you the ones that it came with because they probably look the nicest, honestly. It has this really beautiful dark veining, but then the coloration of the splash on the leaves is just like, oh my goodness. It's this beautiful combination of dark green and a light minty green. It's just so, so pretty. So it hasn't actually been doing that well for me. It would put out leaves, but they just did not look as nice as the leaves that it came with. They're a little bit smaller. Like this is an example of what the leaves would look like when it would grow for me. This hasn't done amazingly for me. I haven't really been too sure on what exactly it wants from me, but recently, and I think this is because of the heat wave, my Hoyas go crazy whenever there's a heat wave. They just love the heat. 
but recently it has given me this leaf which is massive like in comparison to the leaves it was giving me which is like this one up here look at the size difference it's so crazy and oh my goodness the color like oh it's just so pretty so this has kind of renewed my hope for this plant because it just wasn't really looking great and i was kind of like mm, maybe this is one of these plants that looks amazing in other people's collections and grows amazingly for other people but for me it just kind of looks like but no, hope has been restored, my friends. So I think I'm gonna probably chop this plant up because I kind of just wanna root a bunch of cuttings and then grow this as a nice little bushy plant because it's just looking like, like what is this? This weird vine with these weird leaves? I don't know, needs some TLC, but a lot of potential here. Okay, I think we've reached the point where from here on out, these are all just incredible Hoya. I love them. It's hard to, it was really hard to rank them. Um, from here to number one because I just love them all so much But next on our list is my croniana super silver that I was talking about earlier. It is just so pretty Like look at her. Oh my goodness the silver leaves the silver leaves So so gorgeous and she's grown a ton I just got this or started this from cuttings and now I have like a full plant a full trailing plant so how gorgeous is she she's in this little halloween pot that my friend jen painted for me how cute hey it's gonna need to be repotted soon though because it's just growing like crazy the leaves vary from being just completely silver like the beautiful minty green to having some um dark green on them as well i have like this half moon leaf and just everything in between so it's really beautiful to watch grow i think that the genetics on this plant are phenomenal it's super silver as the name suggests and yeah it's honestly just like such a dreamy hoya for me i'm so glad that i have it in my collection i can't wait to grow it out to be even bigger and i can't wait until she starts blooming for me Next, we have my Hoya Thomsonii, which is fairly new to my collection as well. I've only had this for two or three months now, but it was on my wish list for quite some time because this is a fuzzy leafed Hoya. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick up but the leaves are super hairy especially on the newer leaves you can see them they're just like so fuzzy when they first come in but they retain that fuzziness like they stay soft oh my goodness i just love it so much it's so cute i've actually chopped this up already even though i've only had it for a few months um i did a trade with it which ironically the person that i traded with asked for it by accident they meant something else so um so i gave them a cutting of this by accident but i cut it up to do that trade um, i'm kind of glad that i cut it up though because now i have i can probably reach them actually now i have two other cuttings rooting that I can eventually add into my plant. So they're just rooting here in sphagnum. They were in water, but um, I just wanted to move them to sphagnum because the water kept just going down and I didn't want uh, them to be just suspended in the air. It's easier for me to keep up with this sphagnum somehow. Don't know how that computes since sphagnum dries out so easily, but anyways, <laughs> hopefully they just continue to root in there. I have no idea if this is the white or the pink flower. I got it from Plant Haven Toronto. I should ask them if they, if they know. Um, I don't know if that's something they would know, but I'm really curious to know which one this is. I kind of hope it's the pink one, but if it's the white, that's okay. I will be fine with it. Um, I'm really on this thing right now where I want to collect more Hoya that have pink flowers. I'm really obsessed with pink Hoya blooms. So I have a few on my wish list that have really pretty pink blooms that I would eventually like to get. But yeah, so my fingers are crossed that these are gonna be pink, but if they're white, that's totally fine. I'll just be happy if it blooms for me at all. But hopefully one day it will so that I can find out. I was thinking of trellising this, but now that I've seen Kevin's from Hakuna La Planta, who I think recently got rid of his because the smell was so bad, like the blooms smelled so bad or so strong or something. So I'm a little nervous as well about that for if this blooms, if it's gonna smell really bad. Um, I hope it doesn't, but um, he has, his was growing trailing and it just looked so full and lush and beautiful. So I think I might grow this trailing as well because I really, really like the look of that. And if it does well trailing, then like sign me up, you know? This pot is kind of nasty because she's been living outside. But next is my Hoya Chicken Farm, who is one of my favorite Hoya. This leaf, 
these leaves are actually massive as well. I was saying that the prick tie was the biggest in my collection, but this is honestly, I don't think they're as big as that one, but they're quite big. Like this is definitely a large leaf Hoya. And I feel like this is underrated. Like for how immaculate she is, I just don't see enough people growing this plant. This, oh my goodness, the pot is so gross. I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this part. Like I said, she's been living outside for the summer and she's been loving it. This is the newest leaf, which is looking a little strange. Maybe I underwatered when that was emerging. But what's been really cool about this plant over the summer is that it's bloomed twice from this one peduncle. It fully bloomed twice and it looks like it's literally getting ready to bloom a third time. I don't know if you can see that, but like she juicy. She looks like she's getting ready to do something. So that's just crazy. I've never had a Hoya bloom twice from the same peduncle let alone a third time and in such a short time frame like the first time it bloomed for me was in june or at the very end of may and then it bloomed again in july and now it's literally preparing for round three so crazy and we have new leaves coming in there she's just doing really well it's funny because i was just thinking that this hoya kind of looks like a big version of the hoya crassy petiolata splash that i was just showing you earlier i mean it doesn't have as dark as veins of veins but it has kind of the same coloring. It's a little bit more muted on this one, but when the new leaves come in, it's really um, prominent, the, the color difference, but it's a really similar like pattern of splashing and shape of leaf. Yeah, I never really had noticed that before until now, because I have them like beside each other here, but this is honestly kind of like a big version of the Grassy Petty A Lot of Splash. So I highly recommend this plant. It's been so fun for me to grow. It's so exciting when a new leaf comes in because obviously they're so massive and beautiful and really cool when it blooms too. The blooms are like red and yellow and they're just so pretty and cute. And it's been really easy going for me. So I definitely recommend the chicken farm. I'm gonna go put her back outside now and wash my hands. Okay, next is a really new Hoya to my collection. I've had this for less than two weeks, actually. You may have seen it in one of my, in my recent unboxing video, but I'm already obsessed. So I just had to put it here in this spot. And it is my Hoya Cystiantha Splash from Plant Haven Toronto. And oh my goodness, just look at how gorgeous it is. The leaves are so so pretty i'm in love with the splashing but most of all i love the growth pattern like it just looks so pretty when i looked up larger plants of this on instagram just the way they grow is almost polyneura-esque like the way it just kind of flows so i'm just so excited to watch this get bigger and to hopefully just have that beautiful cascading growth pattern um, and also really cool are the blooms on this and when they sent this plant over to me if you watch that unboxing They wrote a message that said this Hoya has some of their favorite blooms of all Hoya And I looked them up and they're these huge like bell shaped blooms really really unique So between the foliage the growth pattern and the incredible blooms this just has to be at Whatever number I'm confused now since since things got moved around. I think this would be number 17 on my list, which is pretty freaking good for a Hoya I've had for less than two weeks out of 40. So yeah, very, very excited about this one. It's still in sphagnum moss, so I need to pot it up probably in September. Next, another Hoya from Plant Haven Toronto. In fact, most, maybe not most, but a lot of my Hoya are from Plant Haven Toronto. They have tons. They have, I think, over a hundred different types on their website right now. So go check it out. Shameless promotion to use my code FERN2023. You can get 15% off of your order. Anyways, <laughs> this isn't like sponsored or anything. I just thought I would throw that in there. Okay, so next, this one I've become recently obsessed with. When I first got this, I was kind of like, okay, it's cute. But now that it's started growing for me, I'm in love. She's perfection. I... Mm, oh my goodness. So this is Hoya biakensis. I think Hoya biakensis biak or or um, species biak. I don't know. It had some weird name, but um, Hoya biakensis. And oh my goodness. Like I said, it, once it started growing, I just completely fell in love with it. Something about the way that this grows and the way that this hangs, like it's so full that it just looks completely gorgeous i oh my god even looking at it in the viewfinder i'm like this is like so freaking nice it's a thinner leaf toya but it's just oh my goodness 
but the way it cascades, it's all in the cascade for some of these Hoya, you guys, I'm telling you. Um, it does have a really beautiful splashy leaf. I think that these leaves can get bigger than this as well. Like I've seen photos of this Hoya with kind of big leaves. So I'm really curious as to what this is. Oh, just look at it. It's so pretty. Really curious as to what this is gonna look like in the future. It's also in this adorable drippy pot that I found just locally. So sorry, I don't have a link for it, but really, really cute. Oh my goodness. It's just been so happy and doing so well for me. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed and I'll be really excited whenever, if, or if this plant ever blooms for me. Anyways, I'm just enjoying it for what it is right now. So, so pretty Hoya Biakensis. Next, we have one that's really filled out in this past year, and that is my Hoya Quinquinervia. This is another one that when I first got it, I was kind of just like, okay, like she's cute, but then it really started growing for me, and I was like, okay, I understand the hype. She is immaculate. So yeah, it's filled out for me so much, and I will say that she's not looking her best right now because she was right in the south-facing window. I've moved her now, but she was in the south-facing window for the past couple of months, and it really just lightened her leaves a lot. And light leaves on Hoya are just not my favorite. This has grown darker for me in a little bit lower light and I definitely prefer that look, but just in general, the leaves are so pretty and when they're newer, they come in really shiny. Like look at how glossy, cause this is a newer one. So it's really shiny still. And then they kind of get a little bit more matte. Um, but yeah, she's just taken off over the past year. I've even chopped her before to do trades, but she's still just going off. She's trellised with an Arca trellis, but she's gonna need an upgrade soon because look at how much she's growing off of it. It's just crazy. She has this whole vine coming out with new leaves coming in and everything. Now, this is another one that can sun stress beautifully and I would love to see that. But like I said, for some reason, I just, my Hoya just don't really sun stress for me. Like I have a hard time with that. So, I've seen some of the new leaves come in kind of sun stressed, but then they just fade back down to green pretty quickly. So I don't know if I'll ever get that beautiful sun stressing on her, but I appreciate her nonetheless. Um, I've never had this one bloom actually, which is kind of surprising considering how well it's been doing for me. But yeah, never had it bloom. I'll be very happy if it does decide to bloom for me one day. That would be so cool. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, Hoya Quinquinervia. Next, another um new one for me but one that i've had in the past and it croaked um so i was so happy to have this replaced if you saw my video but this is hoya nicholsonier new guinea ghost and oh my goodness it just has the prettiest minty leaves in the world this is one of my all-time favorite hoya and i'm so so excited to have another chance to grow this one out because i was so sad when my other one perished on me so yeah, I'm just, I was so overjoyed when I opened this. I couldn't believe that I had another one and it's actually already trying to push out a new little vine for me and a new little leaf, is it? It's really just, it's starting to grow for me. If you can see down there, which is so cute. Still in sphagnum moss, gonna keep it in here until probably September just so I can get situated in my house and everything. I usually leave my new Hoya that come in moss in moss for quite a long time and they do really well. So I'm not worried about up putting it right away or anything, but yeah, love this one. And it gets like a pinky purple sun stressing, which, you know, for me, who knows if it's ever gonna sun stress, but it's really beautiful in other people's photos. Oh, I was supposed to pop in the one that I forgot. I'll go grab it. Okay, so the one that I realized I forgot halfway through filming is my Hoya Multiflora, and I meant to put it between Quinquinervia and New Guinea Ghost, so technically the New Guinea Ghost should have been after this one, but it's fine, close enough. So this is my Hoya Multiflora, and she just does her own thing. She's growing kind of crazy. At first, she was just this side, and then she started putting out new growth, just like a little bit, and I was like, oh, that's cute. And then I pulled her out the other day, and it was this fully formed, like other plant in here or other vine with huge leaves and even blooms coming and everything so i swear that just like sprung up so quickly it's crazy but this hoya oh my goodness if you want a blooming hoya this is the one i know i said the sunrise is easy to get to bloom but this one i'm not kidding she's always blooming you can see that she has two different uh bunches of flowers here that are about to pop any day they're not open yet 
but they will be open soon. They last a really long time and uh, they're so cool. They look like shooting stars or like little comets. This is also called the shooting star Hoya. So yeah, I've wanted this for so long. I've only had it for like, I don't know, a year or so. I got it from a little cutting and now I have this like full plant that's constantly blooming, which is just crazy. I do have it in semi-hydro. I have it in the crystal star pond and it really needs to be repotted soon. But it's just done so well for me. It's been so easy. It is a thin leafed Hoya, but it does really well. I don't love, I'm not in love with the foliage. I mean, I don't dislike it, but definitely the reason why I love this one is for the blooms. So I'm glad that it is such a prolific and easy bloomer because that's, you know, kind of why I wanted it. So yeah, I really, really love the Multiflora and I highly recommend it. Okay, getting back on track here. The next one on my list is my Hoya Hush Kaliana Inner Variegated. And oh my goodness, look at her. What a bush. She is just so lush. I, every time I pull her out, I just can't believe how much she's grown, how full she is, how well she's doing. She just looks immaculate. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful variegation on this plant. It almost looks, I feel like I say this every time, but it looks like a watercolor painting or something. Um, yeah, it's just so beautiful. And look at how bright the variegation is. Like it's just, it's such a stunning plant. A lot of people love this one for the variegation, which I don't blame them because it's just, yeah, it's really, really pretty. All the different colors that are on the leaf. I get a lot of questions on this because mine has done so well for me, but it seems to be one that people struggle with. And I, I wish I had better advice, but I really don't. I grow this the same as I grow a lot of my Hoya. It is in my Mills Botol cabinet. So I've, I've never actually, no, that's not true. I did used to grow it in room humidity and it did fine. So I don't know if humidity is really the reason that mine's doing this well, since I have grown it outside of the cabinet and it's done well, but I do currently grow it in the cabinet. It's been in there for a long time and it just looks so pretty. So I just leave it in there. But this has always just grown like crazy for me. Like I got it as a very small plant, just a little tiny, tiny starter plant. And it just, ever since I got it, it's been growing no, nonstop. So I have this big full one now. I've taken cuttings from this before. I will say really hard to propagate. I've had it just melt away in prop boxes, but um, it's just beautiful. I don't know. I don't know what else to say for it. It just, it just speaks for itself. It is in terracotta, which is kind of interesting because I don't really grow a ton of plants in terracotta anymore. I kind of prefer plastic, but this one has just been living its best life in terracotta. I actually find that my Hoya often do well in terracotta. I do have some of them in terracotta, actually. I have my Thomsonii, my Super Silver Croniana. Yeah, I do have a lot in Hoya. I do, ha I do have lots of them in terracotta still, but um, I probably tend to go for plastic now. Like whenever I repot them, I'll probably opt for plastic. Anyways, yeah, she's stunning. Next is my Hoya Kalimantan, which I'm kind of obsessed with. I love this one. I can't get over the way that the leaves, um, like the sheen that they have, and I can never show it on camera, but they have just a beautiful, almost like satin sheen to them. And it's definitely more noticeable on newer leaves, but you can still notice it on all the leaves. Like it, it's just like kind of, um, has this like luxe, I don't know. It's just something about the, the finish of the leaves I really like on this one. Obviously it has, wait, I thought there was a new leaf coming in on this. Did it die? Mm, how annoying. Anyways, she's beautiful. She has kind of um, that prehistoric, uh, like dark vein Hoya vibe, but she's very just like smooth and sleek at the same time. So it's kind of an interesting combination. She's just so pretty. I love this one. Uh, still in Spagna Moss, but I need to repot her soon. I really want to see this one grow more. I really want to see it do well because yeah, I just, I love it so much. I think that these leaves are just so, so pretty. Really different from a lot of the Hoya in my collection as well. Like I don't think I really have anything else like this. So yeah, I love her so much. Hoya Cali. Okay, this is the last one before we officially enter my top 10. So I guess this would be number 11. And it is my Hoya Wilbur Graves. Look at how stunning. Oh my goodness, I love this one. 
This was trellised until very recently. I just had to take the trellis out the other day because this fell off of the shelf it sits on, which thank goodness it's okay. None of the leaves broke and neither did the pot, which I was very, very grateful for. But, um, but the trellis did come out and I was just having trouble getting it situated again. So I just left it out, but even trailing, oh my goodness, it's just, oh, the leaves. The leaves on this plant are incredible. I really wanted a Hoya Wilbur Graves. These were really rare and hard to find once upon a time. Now they're more accessible, but I really, really wanted one. And the one that I ended up getting, I got this through a trade, but the one that I ended up getting just, oh, it, it exceeds my expectations. Like I feel like this specimen is just out of this world with the amount of silver that <laughs> comes in on the leaves. Like, oh my goodness. It's just so pretty. The contrast between the really light silver and the super dark um, green foliage is just so, so pretty. It's getting a little bit less flashy down here. Like that still has, you know, silver on it, but it's getting a little bit less flashy, which makes me think maybe, I mean, it gets a little bit flashier there, I guess, but I'm just thinking maybe I will have to chop this up because I really want to retain that really high amount of silver. So we'll see what happens with this, but just, oh, how beautiful is it? Like seriously, it's so, so pretty. Okay, so here we are, top 10 favorite Hoya in my whole collection, let's go. The first one is this little cutie here. Actually, it's not even that little anymore, like it is, but it's been growing like crazy throughout the summer. This is my Hoya GPS 7240, and it's also called like the olive Hoya or the grape Hoya because it has these really round looking leaves. Look at them, oh my goodness. It's just so cute, like this Hoya is objectively just like one of the cutest in my collection because of how round the leaves are. It's just beautiful. The leaves have a really matte finish. They're almost like a little bit fuzzy as well. I guess they are, but it's very, very fine, but it does give them a really beautiful matte finish. And they're also just really dark, but with some splashing. But yeah, I just love it so much. Whenever I show this one, I'm always pointing out this one leaf because it's like a half moon with splashing. So yeah, love that one. But the whole thing is just gorgeous. This lives in my Millsbo wide cabinet as well. And it's just done so well ever since I got it. Um, it started growing pretty much immediately. Oh, the new leaves are so soft when they come in too. So, so soft. This is still living in sphagnum moss. I have yet to repot it, but it's been perfectly happy, honestly. I wonder what the roots look like. I mean, they're in there, but you can't see a ton of them. Hoya roots are so fine, but obviously um, it's doing really well. So I'm not really worried about the roots or anything. I'll probably repot this one in September as well. I'm probably just gonna do a big Hoya repot. So if you want me to make that into a video, let me know and I can um, work on that for next month. But yeah, I love this one so much. It's just adorable, love the shape love the color love the finish just everything about it is so so cute and it's been a really good grower for me as well so yeah can't recommend this one more <laughs> you waiting for me honey <laughs> i don't think you're in it it goes to like where the fridge is okay next we have an oldie but a goodie the Hoya Polynera. This is just the regular old green one. I know everybody's obsessed with the variegated version of this right now, but I am obsessed with my green one. Um, would I love the variegated one? Yes, but I honestly feel very content just having this one. Like I love it that much. I think it's so pretty. So um, yeah, I've had this for a long time, probably since 2020 i would say maybe even 2019 but i think 2020 actually maybe even 2019 anyways i've had it for a few years now and it used to be a lot bigger but it got thrips two years ago i struggled with thrips in my collection for six months two years ago and this was the first plant that was affected like the plant that made me realize that i had thrips so that was really unfortunate. I had to toss pretty much the whole thing except for just a small cutting that I saved and that's what I've been growing this one out from. So it's finally starting to get some size to it again, which is really nice, but it's just such a beautiful and easygoing Hoya. I love it so, so much. Like, 
Ugh, the leaves are just so pretty. They're doing, you know, the whole cascade thing that I like to mention when it comes to Hoya. The way that they lay is just so, so pretty. There's one that has quite a lot of, I mean, I guess a few leaves do have those big chunks of splash, which is just so cute. Ugh, I just love it so much. For some reason on this vine, the new growth got a little bit weird. So I'm probably gonna end up cutting that off. Oh, actually, I had this whole thought process earlier. I'm not gonna cut it off because there's actually, it's gonna be too small to show on the camera, but there's a tiny peduncle that's coming out right there. So I'm gonna leave that. Um, and I also, when I was looking at this, noticed another, oh my gosh, there's multiple. <gasps> what? What is going on? Now that I'm looking at this vine, there's literally a peduncle, I'm not kidding you, at every single leaf junction, like except for the very top ones, at every single leaf junction, there's a little peduncle. I don't know if my camera is gonna show, but if you look, there's tiny, tiny peduncles coming out at all of them. What? That is crazy. I've never seen that on this plant before. Oh my goodness, it's happening on other vines too. <laughs> I highly doubt that those peduncles are gonna end up like fully forming and pushing out blooms, but the fact that she's even doing that is crazy because I've never had this plant bloom, not even once for me. So I would simply perish if that happened. Oh my goodness, I'm like, whew. How exciting, wow, that's wild. So I'll keep you guys updated on if I get any blooms from this, but the fact that tiny baby peduncles are forming is really, really exciting. Anyways, Hoya polyneura, this is what she's looking like, gorgeous. And she sits on top of my Mills Botol cabinet and kind of like cascades down the top. So I'm just loving everything about this plant and how it's styled in my home. So I've just been appreciating her so much lately. I kind of fell out of love with her after the whole thrip thing. And you know, there was a lot of hype about Hoya polyneura when I was first really starting collecting plants. So it was very beloved then. And then it, you know, the hype kind of died down and I kind of fell out of love with it and the thrip thing happened but now that it's growing out again it's just looking so good and I'm just head over heels again for it so I'm really happy about that. Next is this little guy here. This is my Hoya Serpens which is a really small leafed Hoya like you can see in comparison to my hand just how dainty these leaves are. They're so freaking cute. Um, this is called Hoya Serpens and the leaves actually have the shape of a snake head. If you can see where like the indents are, it looks very Serpens-esque. So I think that that's really cool. And these are actually fuzzy as well. Like they have fine little hairs on them. They don't feel really soft or anything, but they do have a fuzz to them, which I think just adds to the cuteness, especially when the new ones are coming in, which literally come in like minuscule, so, so tiny. That one has a little peduncle coming in too, which is exciting, but I don't get my hopes up when this gives me peduncles because um, it's really hard to get them <laughs> to bloom. Like I find that the peduncles always just turn to a crisp on me. Oh, there's actually a few peduncles on this right now. Anyways, yeah, I've had this for a couple of years now, two or three years, I would say, and it's been a really steady grower for me. It lives inside my Mills Botol cabinet. I could probably take it out. I think it would be fine, like it's established enough, but I just leave it in there because it's small enough to not really be a bother. And I don't know, it just looks cute. It's doing well, so I don't wanna mess with it, but I do really love it. This is one I would love to just grow out a little bit bigger to get it to bloom one day, you know? Like I have goals for this plant in the future, but for now, I just, I don't know. I just appreciate it so much even with it just being small and not blooming, it's just like, boop, it's just the cutest little thing. And I love how dark the leaves are too. So yeah, really, really pretty plants, planted backwards <laughs> in its pot. But um, yeah, Hoya Serpens, I just adore it. You don't wanna miss out on watering that one um, or the Polyneura, honestly. Yeah, you really wanna keep up with your watering on both of those. Okay, and then moving on to one that is a little bit bigger because it's really, it, whoop, because it's really taken off um, in terms of growth for me the past like year, I would say. This is my Hoya caudata sumatra. 
and I got this as just a small little like either cutting or starter plant I can't quite remember but I know it was just not more than like a few leaves and it has just grown so so much I feel like it took a little while to establish but now it just cannot be stopped it's even putting out vines on like the back of the trellis there this is also living in my oops oh my goodness this is also living in my Millsbow tall cabinet and obviously loving life in there. Yeah, it's doing so well. This one is also fuzzy. When the new leaves come in, you can see that they have quite a fuzz on them. It's really, really cute. It's kind of starting to flop around on this trellis a little bit. It's not super stable. It probably needs to be repotted and given a new trellis just considering how much it's grown in the past little while. But, um, yeah that's on my list to do eventually i'm not i don't think it's super urgent or anything this is a hoya that has one of my favorite blooms however mine personally has never bloomed for me so it's one that i just really anticipate blooming one day i'll be so excited when i see a peduncle on this i literally don't even think i have a peduncle like i check and i never see one so I don't know what that's about, but um, yeah, it just has never... Oh, that's something I wanted to mention with my Hush Kuleana inner variegated too. That's one that it's never bloomed for me. And it's funny because I see people with smaller ones of this and I see people with smaller ones of that one and they bloom like crazy, but mine, no, not a single bloom to be found. So um, yeah, anyways, the blooms are really like feathery or like hairy and fluffy. Like they're just really... So I'm so excited for whenever that happens. I need those feathery blooms in my life. So hopefully one day it will bloom for me. But for now, I just appreciate this nice, beautiful, dark foliage. That one also has a really nice, like, matte look to it. It's just so pretty. I'm looking at it in front of me now that I just set it down. Okay, and then next on my list, I'm going to... What number are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six. Number six, oh my goodness, we're almost in top five, but I need to back up again for this one because it's a larger one again. So number six is my Hoya Shepherdii, which is this crazy string bean looking Hoya. And this one is just so cool, you guys. This is not like a super rare Hoya or anything, but I'm just obsessed. And as time goes on, I keep getting more and more obsessed, okay? I got this and I was like, okay, she cute. And then it started growing and then it started blooming. And I was like, mm, okay, like I see you. But now I'm just, I love this Hoya. It is so cool and it is so easy going. This is growing like crazy for me. Like there's so many, this whole vine is putting out new leaves. These ones are still soft and expanding. There's little baby leaves right here. There's little baby leaves like everywhere on this thing right now. And it's really crazy because this is in low light. Like this is not getting a ton of light, but it still is putting out a ton of new growth and it also is blooming. It just dropped its blooms like a couple of weeks ago, but it did bloom for me. It's bloomed twice now this year. It puts out these adorable little white blooms and it's just the prettiest thing. Like, honestly, I love this Hoya so much. More people need this in their collection. I don't know why everybody doesn't have this, but um, I just love it so much and I love growing it. There's more new leaves coming in there. It's just so fun and it's so funky looking. Like this is different than anything that I have in my collection. So yeah, I just love it. It's so cool and so easy going. It also has this cutie little mushroom that my friend Dakota gave me in there. So yeah, this whole just situation is just adorable. I love this plant so much. It sits behind me here actually on my calyx shelf and kind of cascades down the end and it just, it adds so much. It looks so fun. So yeah love my Shepardii. And now we are moving on to number five, which is a plant that's outside. So I'm going to go grab that one. Okay. I'm going to have to stand to show you this one, but number five is my Hoya Williniana UT152. And oh my goodness, I just cannot believe how lush she is looking. She's grown so much this summer. It's actually crazy. She's hanging out on my, um, like underneath the covered part of my deck. It's so crazy because she has been really struggling this year, like the first part of the year. She had a really tough winter, um, even going into spring. She was doing this weird thing where her leaves were just like 
um, I don't know, getting this, getting these weird markings on them and then they would just die off. So she was dropping so many leaves. Like I was picking them up. Sorry, it's weird that you can't see my face, but I was picking up these dead leaves almost every day. And I was honestly really worried about this plant to the point where I took cuttings um, as, oh my gosh, to the point where I took cuttings as like insurance cuttings because I thought perhaps this plant wasn't gonna make it. But now she has grown so much. My mind is actually blown. Like the way, like just how lush she looks. It's so, so pretty. Oh my goodness. So many new leaves on this. Um, it's even starting to get some of that like dark purple coloring that this Hoya tends to get. This is one that sun stresses so beautifully. Like look. Sorry, I'm so hungry. I'm like shaking, but um, dinner is on the way. We just ordered dinner like a little bit ago, but she can sun stress this dark purple color. Oh my goodness, it's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I am so in love with this Hoya. And I find that she blooms really easily. She's bloomed several times for me, even before she got big when she was just a small plant. She hasn't bloomed yet this year for me, but I just noticed this when I went and took her down from outside. It's this peduncle that is getting ready to pop. Look at that. So I'm gonna get some bloom soon. And I saw another peduncle that was getting ready too. I can't remember what side of her it was on, but I'm sure that I'm gonna get several blooms into the fall with her. It's been fall when she's bloomed. Something about the fall brings on um, Hoya blooms for me on several of mine. So I'm excited to see which ones do bloom in like September and October. Anyways, yeah, she's just gotten so huge. She's living in this hanging basket. And this is a Hoya that has just been loving the outdoor life. So, you know, I'll obviously have to bring her in in the winter, but spring to fall, she will be living outside because she's just taken off. Okay, I need to have a little watermelon appetizer and then we'll finish. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just move the camera up before, but here we are having to make room because the rest of them are all quite large. Okay, so number four on my list is my beautiful Hoya Matilde. I am so in love with this Hoya. She is so freaking pretty. This is a hybrid between Hoya Carnosa and Hoya Serpens, which is really interesting. And I didn't know that when I got this plant, I learned it after. So I always like to mention that just because, I don't know, maybe other people don't know. It's just kind of a little fun fact. And it makes sense because the leaves have that round shape, but they have like the thickness and the, the texture of Hoya Carnosa. So really interesting. And the Carnosa genes in this makes it very tough. This is such an easy Hoya to grow very beginner friendly in fact this is one of the first hoya that i got when i first started like adding more hoya into my collection i got this as just a cutting and i grew it out i've taken lots of cuttings for it from this i actually have a smaller plant this is my mother plant um, but i've taken lots of cuttings and she's so long and beautiful you'll notice that she has quite dark foliage and i get questions about that sometimes it's kind of hard to there's like the glare from the windows kind of makes it hard to see the leaves but she has quite dark foliage and the reason for that is because i grow mine in lower lights if you grow these in higher light you'll get lighter leaves and probably more blooms but for me i just love the dark foliage so much so i grow her in a bit lower of light she's never bloomed for me sadly there's like literally 100 peduncles well maybe not 100 but there's probably like 30 peduncles on this plant but she's never actually bloomed for me which is kind of crazy but it's fine i just let her do her own thing and she lives right beside the shepherdii and they both kind of trail down the edge of this shelf here so yeah they just look so pretty together and i don't know i just love her i've had her for so long she propagates like a dream she's so easy to grow she can live in a variety of different conditions and she's just gorgeous yeah i just love her so much hopefully she will bloom for me one day though because i would just love to see that but how pretty is she honestly Okay, now for top three Hoya in my collection. And if you are not new here, if you've been on my channel at all in the past, these will probably not come as any surprise to you. But coming in at number three is my beautiful Hoya Crimson Queen. She is massive. She's a beast. Like, look at her. Oh my goodness. So, so full and so big. I've had her for several years now. This is also one of the first Hoya 
that I ever got and she's grown so much. I did buy her in this hanging basket. Like literally I've never repotted her or anything in this exact hanging basket, exact uh, growing medium and everything. I bought her trailing a little bit, but not nearly as much as this and not nearly as full. So she's just, she's constantly growing and um, she's just so easy going. Like, yeah, I love her so, so much. And just such a beautiful Hoya. The Crimson Queen is, you know, a really common Hoya. You can find these at your big box store. You can find them at even grocery stores. Some will probably even give you free cuttings from like your local plant groups. But um, I do think even though they're so common, they're just so, so beautiful. Like I love the variegation. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, talking about the princess, this is the queen. So she has the variegation on the outside. The princess wears the gown and the queen wears the crown is what the saying is to remember. But um, yeah, the leaves are just beautiful. She puts out vines that are all white too and they don't last forever but she does hang on to them for a really long time honestly and like look at that pink like are you kidding me oh it's just so so pretty i just love her um the one thing that is like always my goal every year i'm always like this is gonna be the year that she blooms and then she never blooms like literally i have this mature of a plant it's so happy and not a peduncle in sight like I don't know what it is. It's so strange to me that she has not bloomed yet, but you know, whatever. I'm just letting her live her life on her own terms and hopefully I will get blooms one day. I don't know what her excuse is now though because she's getting a ton of light. She lives outside hanging on the deck right beside the Woliniana who we saw um, that is currently putting out uh, multiple peduncles. So <laughs> I don't know. I thought maybe I would see one on her when I took her down, but I don't. So we'll see, one day. It'll be very exciting when it happens. Okay, number two is my Hoya Compacta. I told you she was one of my all-time favorites and yeah, I'm obsessed. I love the Compacta and do you see what I mean? Like look at how beautiful my green one is and then my variegated ones are just like, won't grow for me and they're looking like crap. I don't understand because this one is a literal dream. I've not had a single problem with this plant in like the four years that I've had it. I got it as a very small, like one vine, tiny little pot from a big box store. And I've been growing it out since then. And it's just been like, it's been perfect. I've never had a pest on it. I've never had any problems at all, honestly. It's just been, it's been such an easy going plant. So, yeah, I'm obsessed. I love it. I know these are a love it or hate it plant. I obviously love them. I find them so unique looking and beautiful. Love when people have big hanging baskets with them trailing down. I do have mine kind of trailing. She's on the top of a shelf right now, which you'll see soon. But yeah, I just love this plant so much. It's in this terracotta pot. I haven't repotted it for probably three years now. So um, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to need to be repotted. So I'm just leaving it you know if there's no re if it's not broken don't fix it type of vibes um she does have a little charm down here a little crystal which is so cute but yeah oh my goodness i just yeah i love compacta i love them a lot so yeah any tips to revive my variegated ones or should i just buy new variegated ones like i don't know i've had bad luck twice now with two different types of variegated compacta so <sighs> i don't know what to do i would love to have I would love to have all of the varieties, honestly, like the inner, the outer variegated, the green, obviously. And then there's one I think called Jody's Silver, which is like a silver um, Hoya Compacta. I would love to have that one as well. I've literally never seen it for sale in Canada, but I would pick that up in a hot minute if I did, um, just so I can, you know, collect them all because it is, yeah. One, I was gonna say my favorite Hoya, but we haven't gotten to number one, but it's really hard to choose between my top um, two, I would say. So this is like number two slash number one, <laughs> but I'll show you my other top favorite right now. I have to get on a step stool to get her down because she's quite high up. Okay, are you ready? Coming in at number one of 40 in my Hoya collection is my beautiful, Hoya Linearis. Yes, my friends, of course. My Linearis is number one because I'm just, oh my, I'm head over heels for this Hoya, honestly. 
I love it. And this is another one of these Hoya that kind of had a really trendy moment around the time, same time as the Polynera, like 2019, 2020. Um, and I was so excited to get this. I got it as just like the tiniest little starter plant, like one vine with, you know, a handful of leaves and that's it. I remember when I first got that little plant, I kept like chopping and propping it and I would like sell off cuttings. And then eventually I just decided, okay, I'm gonna grow this plant out. I wanna see it get really full and long. So I've been growing it out for the past couple of years. It's been a bit of a journey. I have some videos on my channel, um, kind of documenting the whole chop and prop process to get this plant to where it is today but this is how she's looking and i am so so happy with it she's so long like let me see i'm five foot six so she's almost six feet long or no she's probably five feet long yeah she's touching the floor from there so she's about five feet long and she just looks so stunning like i don't know what it is something about the way i mean i'm a sucker for trailing plants so it makes sense that I love this one so much, but just something about the way it trails and the way it cascades down, um, it's just so unique. Like, I don't know. I just love the Linearis. If there's anyone else who is a really big fan of Hoya Linearis, let me know down below in the comments. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but yeah, oh my goodness, just such a stunning plant. And they're fuzzy. If you've never seen one, my memory card was full, but we're finishing up here. I was just saying that each of these leaves is fuzzy, so it's like soft and it's just, ugh, I just love it so much. I don't know, this has to be, this has to take the cake for my favorite Hoya. This tied with the Compacta, honestly. <laughs> Another one that I would just croak if this bloomed for me. I see photos, don't mind the, the dogs eating if you can hear that in the background, but I see photos of other people that have like big linearis like this and it has multiple blooms all over it. And oh, that just looks so, so stunning. Yeah, I just love this one. It hangs um, or it sits on my, I have like stacked windows and it sits up on the windowsill of the second one, the higher one. So it comes all the way down and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I love this plant so much. And all the time that I've spent chopping and propagating this has really paid off because I'm just so happy with how this is coming along. And you know, we still have a long ways to go. I still want this to be a lot more full. Um, and I mean, I'm not as concerned about length, like it's pretty darn long, but I want it to be more full. So that's going to be the ongoing goal and to get it to bloom. Anyways. Yeah, Hoya Linearis. Okay, oh my goodness, we have reached the end. I've been filming for like three hours at this point, so I'm a little nervous to tackle editing this footage. Um, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and admiring all of my Hoya. Let me know any thoughts that you have down below in a comment. I would love to hear from you. Let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know which one I need to add into my collection. I'd love to hear your favorite, like from your own collection or your wish list Hoya. Just anything, let's just talk Hoya. All right, thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.